recording also the webinar so that we have it recorded. And it's 10 o'clock, so uh, welcome everyone. And without further ado, I would first give the floor to, to Fabrizia to, to welcome everyone on, on behalf of our team in the Commission. So, thank you very much, really. It's very, very appreciated that you're here. You will see me only to the extent to which that I will be speaking. Afterwards, I will remove the video. The first message, the big thank you, is because uh, we didn't expect such a, a good result, such a good turnout. And we see that each and every time we do these webinars, uh, the people that intervene are different. They've got something substantial to contribute. And then we are able to share this with the, uh, with the wider community. Now, where are we now? Well, we all know that we are at the stage where member states are uh, progressively uh, introducing um, measures to unease or to diminish or to uh, uh, the, the, the restrictions, although social distancing obviously uh, remains because we, we need to have a cautionary approach. And so as uh, the economy starts gearing up to um, what will be a hard recovery and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully a strong renewal uh, where digital can play a big part and must play a big part, uh, I think it's very appropriate that we dedicate the section to advanced digital skills. We have had uh, the first response to our pledges, very encouraging, the Secretariat will will be able to, Brendan will be able to fill us up on that later on. Uh, that uh, I, uh, I believe we've, we up to 49, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the latest count. Uh, and this is, uh, this indeed is significant. And then secondly, and very importantly, I would like very much to welcome the new, uh, the new National Coalition Committee. Uh, this was a big, a long time in the making, but definitely worth it because there is so much that you can, can, can contribute and so much to that an impact in, in, in your country um, as we go forward. Then we have Carmel Thomas from Technology Ireland and uh, what you're doing for, um, uh, for and that I think is, uh, is also very key because in the moment that we are more and more connected, obviously cybersecurity skills need to be in, in each and every one of us as mind. And uh, we need to make sure that we equipped, we equip our companies, we, we equip our SMEs with cybersecurity tools and skills. Uh, but importantly in this aspect is to be aware of what is the quality of the training of the opportunities that we are putting forward. And this is why I think the coalitions are very important. Because there are many people out there that, you know, to be blunt, to make the extra, uh, the extra euro will, um, will peddle uh, courses, will peddle know-how, kits, etc., that are not reliable, that are not up to standard. And that is why if we group together, if we work through uh, our national networks, our, our good coordination on, uh, on the, uh, in each member state throughout, throughout the territories, I think then we can at least try to contribute to good standards and uh, indeed uh, contribute to something that is useful for, for our businesses. But so you will have, um, we will have the, the Irish presentation and then we will listen to Professor Timur Ross Apologies if my pronunciation of your name is not exactly what it should be. Um, from the University of, uh, of Helsinki and Ville Sinisalo. It's even more tricky, uh, but I'm sure you know when you come on, you will teach us uh, how to how to pronounce your your uh, your names. Now these uh, two organisations have developed um, the elements of AI to which we are all familiar. I've enrolled many of my colleagues have done so. Um, and we are going on a collective training uh, to make sure that we are really on top of it. The objective of the Finnish, um, uh, uh, the Finnish government is to train uh, uh, really vast parts of the population in Finland, and we'll hear that from, uh, from the professor and, and, and the colleagues. And um, we are also uh, working on uh, translation and 
wide spreading this uh, this uh, this course through uh, the digital academy that is financed by by DigiConnect. So this is exactly an example I was talking to you before. We know it's a very good um, training opportunity. We know that it's got the endorsement of a of a country. Uh, it has been already tested. There is good. It is something that is replicable in a an authoritative way, and this is where we should we should pull together. Okay, so I won't go more into uh, into this. This is uh, enough for me. I will now listen back, and um, and you know learn from each of your interventions. So thank you very much. Thank you, Fabrizia. And I already see that uh, Brendan is starting to share his presentation. So it's now the time to hear about the update of the call for pledges. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jakob. And good morning to everyone again. Um, just a brief update uh, to bring you up to speed on, on the position where we are since last month when we last spoke. So a short reminder that when we're talking about um, the pledges, we have some very defined groups that we really are looking at. Within the labour force, we're looking at the SMEs, the self-employed, job speakers, and today, the digital experts. Um, we also need to keep in mind the digital skills for education element, which is looking at the teachers, the students, and the parents. And finally, the older adults and vulnerable groups, which is how we structured the pledge campaign around the COVID-19. So a brief reminder, we launched on the 30, 30th of March. Uh, we've had targeted a campaign. Um, all of you that follow our social media, I'm sure are sick and tired of asking for pledges. However, the, the work must continue. Um, we've been really looking at a way of um, utilizing the pledge viewer and the structure of the pledges to get an idea of how people are able to respond and to better share those initiatives across the way. We've had a phenomenal response. Um, this has been absolutely brilliant as far as we're concerned. Uh, we have 49 pledges been submitted. There's a lot more in the pipeline. We've had 75 uh, organisations register, so we're expecting a lot more to come in. And we've been able to accept 20. Just to give you a brief understanding is that it takes a bit of time just to, between us and the pledger just to get everything uh, agreed before we can accept it. But we're absolutely blown away. And just an example there is a recent one that we were able to approve, which came from Green Fox Academy in um, Prague, who are providing stay-at-home coding camps in HTML, CSS and Java for, for, for different people. So really great initiatives that are happening. Um, and really, really um, enthusiastic about what we're seeing. Um, again, how to get involved. So post on your social media, share it on your websites and connect with us and, and help you support. We've had some great engagement. Uh, thanks very much to, to Latvia who's been spreading the news. Ireland has been in touch with us who are going to be getting involved and, and sharing with their members. Luxembourg uh, has been uh, really engaged and we've developed, we've had a webinar with them late this afternoon with Belgium. We'll also be having a session with their members and uh, thanks to the to the Lithuanians as well who've been sharing. So just a small uh, summary there and again check everything out on the pledge viewer and get in touch with us for it to, to see how you can help out. So thank you again everyone. Brendan, thank you very much and really great results from the from this call and, and big thanks to, first of all, uh, you for managing the pledges and, and, and also big thanks to everyone, all the coalitions that have been involved and that have contributed. Um, we have Annika uh, with us who is monitoring the chat, uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct. Annika, there is, I think, one, uh, one post which might be worth just mentioning. Yeah, it's... Uh... Carm from uh, the uh, coalition in Malta, who is writing that they have launched a, um, a collaboration with the Malta Communications Authority, which is called eBisnify, and it's a training program for small SMEs and self-employed on e-commerce. Um, and the, uh, the objective is to increase digital skills in, in this uh, area and, of course, also e-commerce. So I guess this is something that will be added to the best practice uh, page, uh, which we have here. I will post the link now in the chat if you want to see the, the page we have created with all the best practices we have received so far. Exactly. Thank you, Annika. And I encourage everyone who is following and who has the national coalitions that have similar 
initiatives, actions, especially, of course, related to the current difficult situation to to share the, the, the link or the short description as Carmel did in the chat. We will be collecting it and we update this uh, this page on our website regularly so that uh, that uh, people can see also what uh, what are the national coalitions and their members are doing. And talking about the national coalitions, as Fabrizia mentioned, we have the pleasure now to have uh, here with us uh, the Italian national coalition. And uh, we will first hear um, a short uh, short introduction uh, of the, from the Italian national coalition from uh, Nello Iacono. And then uh, we will also welcome Barbara Cominelli, who will talk about one particular initiative uh, of, uh, of Microsoft as a member of the coalition that they do in the area of advanced digital skills for students and workers. So I would now just like to give the floor to Nello and we agree that I will show the slide. So I'm just going to show it right now. But Nello, you can already start talking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jakob. Uh, I'm very, very glad to be here for the uh, first introduction of the Italian uh, National Coalition and uh, because uh, the problem of the uh, gap in digital skills is a, a very huge problem in, uh, in Italy and uh, we have to uh, run uh, to uh, do something uh, to reduce this gap. Uh, Repubblica Digitale, Digital Republic, is uh, a project that starts uh, uh, about one year ago, in uh, May, and uh, nowadays is a, a, a program uh, with uh, a, a very uh, high ambition uh, to uh, uh, real uh, have a, a, a for the first time, a strategy for the um, digital skills uh, in uh, in Italy. Uh, the the um, this program is coordinated by the Department of Digital Transformation uh, in the uh, context of the Minister for Technological Innovation and Digitalization. Um, the coordination board is. Uh, a um, uh, very very wide for the uh, participation of several ministries uh, education work and welfare uh, youth and sports uh, economic development uh, public administration and university uh, research and uh, uh, we have in uh, our board uh, a Italian Digital Agency and uh, the European Code Week coordinator, and also the Association for uh, regi Regions, uh, Municipalities, uh, Business, Universities, uh, and uh, Resource Centers, uh, too, and the citizens, obviously. And uh, we are working with the uh, main Italian observatories uh, uh, on uh, digital skills uh, from businesses and also from universities. Uh, nowadays, uh, we have uh, in the coalition uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 100 initiatives uh, launched by uh, more than 100 organizations, and uh, they uh, are from uh, businesses. Uh, Microsoft, but we have also as, as me in uh, in our uh, coalition uh, municipalities as uh, Rome, Milan, uh, uh, and uh, Venice, and uh, many others, and also uh, public entities uh, as uh, Union Camere and uh, NGO. Uh, uh, we have also universities uh, in uh, our uh, coalition and uh, a potential, potential uh, beneficiaries of these uh, uh, initiatives have, uh, can uh, uh, reach uh, more than uh, uh, 3 million uh, of uh, participants and uh, in, uh, in the, this year and is uh, a, a, a good uh, target, but uh, it's important because uh, uh, we have uh, a, a very difficult period where we are starting with smart working, uh, 
uh, distance learning uh, in schools and universities uh, and uh, uh, we have to cope with the, uh, these difficulties uh, and uh, uh, we have to reduce uh, rapidly our uh, gap. Uh, we are working on uh, four action areas uh, that are the mainstream. Uh, this is uh, uh, for digital skills. So one, uh, um, uh, the, the first is in education, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, area is uh, coordinated by uh, education ministry and uh, uh, university on research, uh, ICT in uh, emer emerging technologies and advanced technology skills that is uh, uh, led by um, university research uh, ministry and uh, uh, economic development ministry, uh, digital skills for labor force in private and public sectors, including uh, the uh, managers and uh, so the uh, e leadership uh, uh, skills and uh, this is led by economic development and uh, public administration uh, ministry and uh, the fourth is uh, about uh, citizen skills uh, citizen skills uh, based on uh, decomp and uh, uh, this is uh, led by uh, our department of digital transformation uh, no i'm very uh, sorry i will need to just to ask you to wrap up uh, we are a little bit running out of time for this presentation so if you can just uh, very quickly conclude that would be great thank you yes and the the the, the last is the the uh, next mass, my main milestone is uh, the June now uh, the strategy and action plan. Thanks. Thank you very much, Nello. Indeed, I um, mean, impressive already numbers of 3.5 million potential beneficiaries in 2020. This is definitely something, something very inspiring. Now we will turn now to one of your members, who is uh, Microsoft Italia, uh, and we should have Barbara with us. Um, I saw her somewhere that she joined. Hi. Hello, Barbara. Barbara Cominelli, who is the Marketing and Operations Director in Microsoft Italia, uh, Microsoft Italy. And um, Barbara, you do some uh, amazing activities and actions exactly in the area of advanced digital skills and ICT uh, specialists. So I would like to give you the floor. Just tell me whether I should also show your presentation or whether you will show it yourself. I'm trying to show it myself, but... Um... Probably my Microsoft PC has something against uh, Cisco WebEx and doesn't oh, want sorry. to share. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but if necessary, I can also show it myself. It would be great, please, yes. because uh, apparently it's not working. Okay. Sorry. So you can start talking and I will be showing the presentation in, Very the, good. in a second. Okay, thank you. Very good. Um, we called uh, uh, we called our plan, and uh, our plan is part of what uh, Nello just explained of the same alliance, Ambition Italia. That means uh, Italy ambition, because uh, we thought that uh, to restart the country, and that was pre-COVID, of course, because we started uh, nearly two years ago. We needed to really build on skills. If you go to page two, um, you see the situation in Italy. And uh, here, uh, I mean, uh, I don't need to tell you, but uh, we are not very advanced in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, ge in general, digital competitiveness, but especially sk uh, skills and human capital. Uh, we have a huge skill mismatch. And uh, so uh, while there is a big demand in Italy for ICT skills, we are seeing a growing uh, skill mismatch. So from here to in the next two years, the, the, the offer will not be able to cover uh, 125 people in terms of demand. Uh, at the same time, there is the paradox that uh, we have a huge unemployment rate. It was uh, 10% before COVID, uh, now the rate uh, is expected to surge to 11.6%. And unfortunately, this rate uh, is about 30% for uh, young people and up to 40% for young women. 
So putting together all this, uh, uh, it's clear that uh, um, working on the solving this digital mismatch, uh, it will be even more crucial now that we we are in the post-COVID situation. So uh, the plan uh, was orchestrated across th three main areas. One, building, uh, if you go to page three, please, Jacopo, sorry. Uh, the first one is uh, creating the competence of the future and the pipeline. So we started with a number of programs for school, university and ICT professional, and I will go in detail in a while. The second was the second pillar was uh, skilling for people who are already uh, working and meaning upskilling and reskilling, but also working on uh, on uh, the leaders in the company because they also need uh, uh, to upgrade their digital skills and uh, uh, open innovation because we thought that for um, large companies open innovation is a way to very good way to learn digital skills and finally one of the pillar which is uh, crucial uh, for us is accessibility and inclusion so uh, making sure that uh, thanks to technology and uh, today is very easy we don't forget uh, the to include the people with disability and uh, including all the talents and so uh, this was a specific area of focus because uh, uh, today, um, it, it was a specific area of the program. I'm not talking that much uh, uh, about uh, in this uh, uh, few minutes, but uh, for us, it's crucial that uh, um, we use the technology, AI, and all the technology we have available to include. And paradoxically, with uh, uh, digital, it's easier to include people who have a hearing problem, who don't see very well, who have cognitive problems, because uh, we have the tools to, to include them. Uh, the program, uh, if you go to page four, is uh, was born not as a Microsoft program, but as an ecosystem program. Clearly, uh, the, the challenge is very big, and so we decided to put together a number of partners, companies like uh, us, partners, institutions, uh, uh, NGOs, uh, universities, and the idea is really that uh, it's not Microsoft program, but it's a program of an ecosystem of companies who work together. If you go to number five, um, you see the number, we, we tried to put together a number on initiative that started from the funnel of primary and secondary school, where the objective was to light the, uh, to create an interest and uh, make sure that these guys uh, uh, start learning no, the, the toolbox. And so we started with coding and with basics of AI. We went uh, through university and, and um, higher education, and then with programs that also went uh, into upskilling and reskilling and lifelong learning. Um, I selected four of the initiatives that we launched. We launched many more, but these are the ones that have been more impactful. The first one is uh, uh, an initiative regarding digital labs in schools. Uh, we created uh, 36 digital hubs across the country, uh, plus an online platform, and we trained 400,000 students and teachers. Here, the objective was training them on AI, giving them the basic tools to understand what is, is artificial intelligence and how they can use it. And it's really amazing how hungry they are to learn, both the students and the teachers. And uh, the program will continue this year and uh, we, we aim to increase the number of content online, but also the number of uh, hubs which will not be physical probably in the next uh, months but uh, we will try to make sure that uh, we recreate the same uh, idea of a digital session with a class so uh, not only a platform with content but really going to a specific class and teaching to students and teachers together maintaining their identity as a class uh, another um, program uh, which um, I particularly am particularly fond of is Coding Girls. Here, uh, there are thousands of programs to, to help girls familiarize with coding. 
we thought that uh, one of the best way is to give the younger girls role models. So we trained 1,000 uh, girls in their 15s, 16s, and then we sent these um, teenagers to train to girls who are younger. And uh, because the, the the point was also not to te- not only to teach the younger girls, but also to break the stereotypes. So in the very moment you have uh, a 16 years old and you are 12, and you think that that that, that 16 uh, years old lady is very cool and uh, uh, she's uh, kind of a role model for you, and you see that she's into training, into coding, and coding is not immediately you are, you realize that coding is not for techies, it's not for male, it's not for nerd, coding is cool. And it worked very well, and we trained 10,000 girls across the Italian uh, territory. Uh, moving on, on the um, uh, deep and uh, IT competencies, uh, we instead created 60 academies uh, with our partners in uh, across the territory. Here, uh, the training, of course, is very different is about uh, how to become a cloud specialist, how to become a machine learning engineer, how to become a cybersecurity expert. We have a number of these content available for free for these uh, people, but uh, we complement it with academies. So there is the platform, but then there is also a place where um, it was physical. Now it will uh, we will be make it digital where people uh, already in IT or who want who are getting out of the university can train and here the point is that they they either they update their skills or if uh, they come from the university they they learn to use the what they learned in the real life and this is also leads me to the last um, program this is a program with universities here uh, we partnered with uh, the conference of the Italian rectors, uh, which is the national entity that uh, coordinates all the universities uh, in uh, Italy. And um, we piloted uh, with four universities how to integrate the academic course of data science uh, with uh, hands-on laboratories. So from our side, uh, we give technology, we give content, we give trainers. And the idea is to make sure that these guys, the students, not only learn the theory, but they have a platform to uh, um, to, to actually try it and to actually uh, learn how what they learn theoretically <coughs> is implemented inside uh, the company, inside uh, the real world. And this is very, it's really nice. The students and the professor liked it. And here the secret is that we don't want to, the the point, we are very humble in this. We don't say, we don't want to, the academic uh, training is super important because we know that in five years, uh, probably the tools that we are are, uh, showing you will be updated and you have to learn new tools. But please make sure that, uh, you uh, complement the theoretical theoretical part with training on the job. So if you are talking about uh, an AI model or an algorithm, here is the tool where you can train it. And possibly if you need a data set, you can also ask the companies involved to provide you a data set to play with. Barbara, I'm, uh, very, I'm very sorry. I, I will need to ask you again to also wrap up. Yes, because we sorry. I'm very passionate this about this program. And it's, it's clear it, 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 your passion is really transmitted through the video conference. Let's to give you just the, the last slide on the numbers. So we started more or less one year and a half ago, and we have engaged 800,000 people. We trained more than 500,000 and certified 36,000. Certified is really people who went through a quite a deep and serious uh, certification program, and now they are very in the, I mean, those are jobs which are sure. Barbara, and thank that. you. Thank you very, very much for your presentation. If I, I, if I may just say really a big thank you and a big welcome. This is, this is important work, and I think it, there will be a lot of good practices that we can build on. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Fabrizio, as well, and thank you, Barbara. I'm turning now quickly to Anika to see whether we have some uh, comments, some questions on in the chat. Um, yes, uh, Carm from Malta just reminds everyone that there is a common European framework for ICT professionalism in all sectors, and he has posted the link in the in the chat for those interested to follow that subject. Excellent, thank you, Anika. And of course, if everyone has a question. Uh, please feel free to share it, uh, post it in the chat. Annika will be keeping an eye on it. And also, if you have some initiative that you want uh, to suggest, submit for to be included on the overview of the of the activities and actions, please put, put it in the chat as well. And now I'm turning towards Carmel Sommers, who is uh, working in the um, uh, Technology Ireland ICT skill net. So we go from Italy to to the, the, the north, a uh, little bit norther, but we will go even norther uh, in a few minutes. But now Technology Ireland ICT skill net. I'm asking Carmel, are you there? Yes, I see you. Uh, I will unmute you so that you can. Can you speak? Is that OK? Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Do you have a presentation? Or... I, I do. I'm just trying to share it so actually at the moment. Uh... You, you click you click share screen and and yeah, which I did. The... Share content. It's connecting. Yeah, so it will take just a few few seconds, uh, I think. And uh... okay. And so we will now talk about skills, especially skills in cybersecurity, um, because Carmel is is coordinating the activities of the of the Irish ICT skill net uh, in this area. Does it work? Uh, strangely enough, it just keeps saying it's. Uh... It's it's just keeps saying connecting, connecting. It's just going around in circles. Um, do, would you like me to continue and talk through it? I know it's not very useful, but you maybe can, this or, screen will come up. Or you can just send me the presentation very quickly and I can display it for you if you want. And in the meantime, you can be talking about it. Perfect. I will. I'll do that now right away. Oh, dear. Technology is great, isn't it? <laughs> it's OK. I think we, we, will, we will handle it. Okay, let me just send you this really quickly. Yeah, thank you. And attach the presentation, sorry. Ah, yes, here we go. Thanks. And you can already start talking and I will um and I will show the presentation as soon as I get it in the computer. Okay, and it's just on its way to you. So thank um, you very much. No problem. Okay, sorry for that, folks. So let me um, let me start by introducing who we are. So Technology Ireland ICT Skillnet. Um, our focus is to upskill private sector employees, and that is very much in the areas of advanced technical leadership and competency-based programs. So that's the the type of programs that we run. Very much enterprise-led and demand-driven. So what we mean by that is that. We take our guidance in terms of the programs that we deliver from our industry um, clients, I guess. Um, and those, um, what that means then is that we work with um, uh, third level institutions and we work with some private um, uh, training uh, providers as well. But what we deliver then is learning content that's relevant and needed by industry. And it's also learning that can be applied once the student goes back into the organization. So that's why we call it enterprise led and demand driven. Um, we also, the ICT Skillnet includes the Technology Ireland Innovation Forum. Um, so as a result, what we are doing is that we are sort of bringing the whole area of innovation to our clients. So for all of those organizations that we support, innovation is becoming a critical uh, component that they need to ensure that they bring into their business to keep them viable. And we're using that forum and the members of that forum to actually help guide organizations in terms of innovation. So a lot of these things, they actually tie very nicely together. Uh, Jakob, do you, you, do you have the presentation yet? No? So, sorry, I, it, didn't, it hasn't arrived yet, but I'm oh. showing the website, so at uh, least I can I can show okay. the website. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Apologies, I should have sent you this last it's night. It's okay. Um, so I'm just going to cover some of the, the high level areas where we have programs. So starting with innovation, we have a number of programs in the innovation space, in global business services, in the data center space, data analytics, cloud, 
blockchain, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and software development. So um, we've a, we've nine master's programs, two bachelor programs, and a number of other programs that uh, we offer. And primarily, these are mostly online programs. So specifically, I just want to call out in the cybersecurity space that as of next month, we will be, which is May, it's just around the corner, we will actually be announcing the fact that we are now an affiliated partner of um, Cisco and networking academy and we'll be offering a number of self-paced training programs and these include two in the cybersecurity space one of them is an introduction to cybersecurity and the other one is uh, cybersecurity essentials I also wanted to just give you a, a quick overview of, a, of um, Cyber Ireland. Uh, Cyber Ireland is a cluster network. Um, they support um, Ireland's cyber sector. They also are industry led um, and supported by academia and government. But their aim is very much to position Ireland as a global cybersecurity leader. Um, the reason for including these is that I currently sit on the board of Cyber Ireland and they have four working groups, um, building the community, business development, talent and skills and research and development. And I actually lead the talent and skills one. So we are partnering with Cyber Ireland for some of the programs that we are running um, just as of the last uh, two months, really. So, uh, if I move along, I'm now on slide five, if they've arrived, uh, arrived Jacob, uh, which is the cybersecurity skills initiative. So this is where it all started for us with cybersecurity. Back in 2018, we launched the cybersecurity skills initiative. Very different program for us in that, again, led by industry, partnering with a number of government agencies and partnering with academia, we came up with a series of programs. So one program that has a number of elements to it and the goal was to address the skills deficit in cybersecurity, and that's across sectors and also across industry sizes so typically our ICT skill net would have worked with the larger multinationals and some of the larger indigenous companies but cyber of course it goes across every industry and every sector as small medium and large so the goal was to deliver a range of training programs here to promote cybersecurity best practices and really to encourage the adoption of ai in cybersecurity again tying in with our innovation uh, forum so the the cybersecurity upskilling model uh, was focused on five key areas the first awareness just basic awareness for employees for business owners making sure organizations were prepared ensuring that they had existing cybersecurity capabilities that they could build on looking towards resilience so how do you build and create specialist skills and expertise within an organization and bring them into your organization then we focused on standards, so very much around um, the whole idea of um, making sure that the programs, both that we delivered and any other programs that organizations would take, were based on current security standards. Um, and then the innovation piece, bringing AI and automation to the table. So how do you complement those employees that you have in this space by using technology to take on some of your cyber um, cybersecurity work? But then along came uh, COVID-19. Um, and here, even though most of our programs, as I mentioned, are actually remote, we ended up, uh, we, we run a lot of uh, breakfast seminars, lunchtime seminars, half day programs in certain areas for organizations. So we kind of looked and said, look, the world is working differently now. How do we deliver something, especially in the area of cybersecurity, which is key? How do we start to work remotely ourselves and be able to bring con really good, valuable content? And kind of following up on what Fabrizia said at the start, we spent a lot of time looking at the content that we would deliver to make sure that it was actually relevant. And what we would normally deliver, I suppose, where people are working in a, in a workforce and in a, a, a physical environment needed to change very much for now that we had people working remotely. So we really looked very hard at the type of um, education that we were going to provide. So what we're doing is we're delivering uh, four webinars to start with. 
and um, we were calling this Cybertech Fortnite. It runs every Wednesday. The first Wednesday is a webinar um, by a security industry leader. The second week we're running virtual capture the flags and we're hosting these in partnership with Cyber Ireland and uh, with the delivery um, organization, which is Zero Days. And they cover novice to expert. So if you can load a web page, you can actually um, engage and take part in uh, the capture the flag exercises. Um, the following that, so we've eight weeks of these. They started two weeks ago with our first webinar, which was actually covered by um, a chief superintendent um, with um, the Irish Police Force, um, and he spoke about you know what the current landscape is. Um, in terms of what law enforcement are seeing with Europol, with Interpol, how to, you know, if you're a business, how to be able to contact the police force if you're worried about something. He gave um, he gave a lot of guidance around some of the fake news that was out there around cyber attacks and some of the real things that were happening so people would be aware. So we kind of started with that awareness. Our next uh, webinar is next week, which we're covering risk and governance for organizations now that they're working remotely. Um, so we have a range of topics so everything really from basic cyber hygiene for people who are now working from home that need to be maybe a little bit more aware of how they protect their data and their self and themselves and we will finish off the series in um, six weeks time now because we've run our first capture the flag was yesterday so um, after the in another six weeks we will have completed those four those uh, four webinars and four CTFs and we're finishing off the series with another three webinars which are currently in planning so we have a mix of females and males delivering the webinars so that we're getting um, a different perspective on uh, what's happening um, out there in the in the world of cybersecurity, and uh, I've uh, really come to to the end of um, what I was going to deliver. I would say that what we're seeing as a result of these cyber tech fortnights is um, that they're national. Everybody can 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 join in on this. We've kept them to a half an hour in terms of the webinar itself, in terms of the, the presentation, and then a 15 minute Q&A. And they've been really well attended. And we're just delighted that we're seeing such a range of organizations engaging in this. And we are running two other webinar series on a Tuesday and a Thursday. So Tuesday is digital transformation. And on Thursday, we're covering a range of topics, some of them are cyber based um, just so that we kind of get that stretch across the week and um, make sure that if somebody can't maybe attend on a Thursday that they can actually attend a real live session that's based again on cyber on the Thursday. But we have a range of leadership type topics. We started those with how people work from home in this environment um, and how they lead teams, everything from, um, you know, how your business model is changing and to adapt to that changing model. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much um, kind of covered out what, what we're doing with these, um, these webinars and particularly with these Capture the Flag events. Carmel, thank you. Carmel, thank you very much. I, I see that the presentation arrived like 30 seconds ago. So oh dear. it got stuck somehow on the, in the servers. Um, but thank you very much. And I, what I tried to do, I tried to mirror what you were saying on the website. So I was at least kind of going through the website and, and show really uh, the, the, the cyber tech, um, you know, the cyber tech fortnight and, and the webinar. So I at least tried to mirror that. And we have a page. Uh, maybe Annika, if you could share the link or, or uh, in the, the page where we put the presentations and we will, of course, put your presentation there so that, that people will be at least able to, to download it and, ha and have a look at it and, and, and read it through after we finish with the webinar. But thank you very much. Uh, yeah, sorry, that. Jack, Jacob, just before we move on, could I just say that we are recording all of our webinar series. So they're on YouTube on the ICT Skillnet uh, YouTube channel. So if anybody wanted to use these uh, webinars, particularly the ones on the cybersecurity or any of the others, they're more than welcome to head there. And I'll, I'll put a link into that and give you an updated presentation. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks. And and, and just to notice that the, the webinars are for free, right? So people can join yes. them for free and, uh, and participate. They're all free. Absolutely. Just one, just one question uh, for you, Carmel. Um, uh, it's about the engagement of different types of businesses. Have you seen that SMEs are as likely to take part as more, I mean, as bigger or larger multinationals? 
Yes, and I think that we're we're seeing even more of that at the moment, which is which is just great news to see that, um, because it can often be a little bit hard to bring SMEs to the table. I think they tend to rely very much on whatever partner is managing their IT infrastructure, because often they use a business partner and they think, okay. That's all handled by them. So we are seeing more SMEs coming to the table, particularly for these um, webinars. And we've seen them sign up for the Capture the Flag events. So it's it's working really well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much once more, Carmel. Thanks, Annika, for picking up also the, the questions from the audience. We are a little bit late, but I hope that we, we will be able to stay maybe 10, 15 minutes longer because we will now move to, to, another, to the other part of the webinar, which is an interview about the, um, the course, the online course uh, called Elements of AI. And I hope that I have both uh, speakers here with us. So first is the team Ross. Uh, I hope my pronunciation is correct. Please correct me yeah. if it's not. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's Timo. fine. And I am here. Uh, so it's Professor Timur Ross, thank you, who is who works in the University of Helsinki, and we have also um, Ville Sinisalo from um, uh, the company called Reactor, um, and we will be talking about the the course Elements of AI. Ville, can you hear us as well? Yes, loud and clear. Thank you as well. Thank you very much. So. In, in general, I mean, just to introduce artificial intelligence, um, many people consider it a buzzword, but especially in in these uh, current difficult circumstances, even more people and 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 the scientific community agrees that uh, artificial intelligence can be a way forward and way for our recovery. Uh, but at the same time, we have the issue that not many people in Europe and beyond understand really what AI is, and even less people and less experts know how to design and develop AI. And so we will talk now about uh, AI skills, in both basic and, and um, advanced. And we have invited uh, Professor Ross and Ville because they developed something unique, useful, original, and especially available online uh, to everyone. It's the course Elements of AI that teaches the basics uh, and the basic concepts of artificial intelligence. It was launched in 2018, and it's, until now it has already reached 400,000 people. Uh, and so I, my first question would be to, to Professor Ross, um, that I would like to know where this idea come from to develop this, uh, this course. And did you expect to have such a good result in, in uh, less than two years? Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, you can hear me, okay? Yes, we can hear you very well, thank you. All right, so thanks very much uh, for the invitation, of course, and I, uh, I've really enjoyed uh, the webinar so far. Um, the idea uh, actually came uh, from the government of Finland in some way, because at the end of 2017, the, the government of Finland launched uh, the, as the first European country, the national AI strategy, strategy and a, a one sort of uh, one, one uh, distinguishing factor in the, in the Finnish strategy is uh, inclusiveness that we want to have, uh, you know, applications, um, in, in focus and uh, everyday people, uh, citizens uh, in focus. Not only, of course, we will also want to create, uh, you know, scientific excellence and innovations uh, and industrial activity, but, uh, but this was kind of a, a focus point in the Finnish strategy. And then, and then the government called for educational institutions to provide open and uh, easily accessible materials. And uh, and we we felt at the University of Helsinki that since we have we have uh, expertise uh, on AI and we've been obviously teaching our students on it, uh, we we would have uh, wanted to um, we we felt that it's kind of the onus is on us to to step up on this and and respond to the call. And about the expectations, did you expect in in less than two years to have already four hundred thousand students? Well, actually, I'm asked this a lot, uh, and and uh, I don't want to sort of uh, sound very, um, I don't know, self-important. But I, uh, to be honest, I did expect I, my my expectation because you know it was a uh, AI such a hot, such a hot topic, uh, and there aren't other courses that offer uh, it in in a format that is accessible to everyone. So I felt that there is like definitely there should be a course like that, and we we really took an ambitious uh, goal and and sort of felt wanted to make it attractive 
uh, to as many people as we can. So I was kind of expecting uh, half a million people. Actually, I, I, I did say that uh, in the beginning. So soon we'll surpass that. And then well I can done. say that I'll be I'll, I'll be surprised. <laughs> well done, well done. Maybe you use some uh, artificial intelligence algorithm to, help you to, to do that guess, guess before. Now yeah. I'm turning to Vila, uh, Vila sorry, Vila, um, your company Reactor partnered with the University of Helsinki. Um, so how does this cooperation uh, started? Uh, how did it work? And, and uh, you know, uh, was it the key also success factor of the course? I think it was one of the success factors of the course, like uh, uh, in our experience, it really like uh, brings together like uh, the best of kind of like a two, a pretty different worlds still. Um, it's kind of like uh, packing the really good education uh, to a form that uh, that people really want to learn it in and kind of like uh, on the on the academia side you have the best possible education and the best possible research and then you can like um, as a company you always look the world as a as a place that you really need to find your target group and you really need to fit the market demand uh, so basically like uh, having these two things combined and kind of like uh, uh, thinking that uh, that we can really succeed together and do like awesome awesome stuff uh, meaning like as Temu said like uh, like uh, aim for half a million students for example for a, for a course and kind of like then just just start executing it in a, like a good collaboration like that's that's really the key key of this unit so, so in our sense, at least, like um, we we strongly believe that uh, that companies and and universities should should do a lot more to get. Thank you, um, Professor Ross. My question now would be about um, about why to do it. Why do you think that a large share of Finnish and at the end also European population should have should know the basics of AI and should should master the, the at least the basic AI skills. Uh, right, so th th that's an excellent question, and and there's a few answers. One of them is the is the kind of um, innovation capacity and the capacity to uh, come up with new uh, new ideas to solve problems with AI. But that's not even the most important, like that sort of technological skill level. That's not the most important reason why we started to to create this course. Our most important motivation to to do it was to. Uh, raise awareness among uh, citizens who are living in a world where AI is being used all around them, most often even without people understanding that they're using AI if they're doing like Google search or using recommender uh, systems uh, to, to get news online, social media, filter bubbles, all these kind of societal phenomena where AI and technology is one of the driving forces and one of the, one of the things that are changing the world. If people don't have the basic knowledge, it's impossible for them to form an informed opinion about many of those issues. And at the, at, at the end, those issues are, in fact, uh, I would say political, like not not political in the sense like which party should I you know vote for or or like any concrete sort of um, let's say party political issues, but it's it's more like issues about regulation, how we want to how we want to regulate technology and its use, and and I, we really want to help people to understand the technology on the level at which they can form an informed opinion and then go out and and and, and sort of try to try to be the change. Okay, thank you. I just remind the participants that we, they can, of course, share questions, post them in the chat, and we will have time at the end of the interview to, to pick them up. Now, I'm turning to Vile again. Um, I guess the, the whole journey uh, for your company and for University of Helsinki must have been very intense, and I think it's intense still. Um, what, would you, what would you say were the, the biggest obstacles? And on the other hand, which things in your, in your experience worked uh, much more smoothly than you were expecting before. Yeah, yeah. I think like um, like the the, uh, the journey was intense, of course, when you have like big aims and uh, like big goals ahead of you. Uh, but then again, it's kind of like a freeing at the point uh, that uh, that you are aiming 
to do something that hasn't been done before. Uh, so, so you have also the kind of the freedom of uh, of doing the um, of like uh, doing the decisions as you as you go and as you want. And um, and on the collaboration, I think it was like uh, really everybody like pulling more weight uh, than their role would have been. So really like chipping in their extra time and free time and and all all the time that 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 the both parties like uh, had. I think that was a huge factor. The collaboration was really smooth and it was really tight. Like we did a lot of things together and and still do, of course. And um, and kind of the same angle, like the same understanding what the what the course should be. Like as as Temu said, like we both were aiming to the same things, even like a bit different kind of like uh, uh, backgrounds. So to dem demystify AI and 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 really like encourage people to learn uh, what AI is and and uh, what it can can and can't do so so kind of like um, uh, having the same same goals in mind and the same starting line was really the key key on that and trying to like uh, establish a course that really can help the whole society to to like learn new skills to be more ready for the for the digital transformation like that's something that that, that really uh, made the uh, working together much easier so it's about the it's also about the mindset of the partners and that you that you really are are aiming at the at the same objective with the same mindset. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Thank you. Now let me turn to something which which will become uh, uh, maybe more practical for the participants now because um, last year the the Finnish presidency of the Council of the EU partnered with the European Commission and and, and decided that the AI online course should be freely available to, to all uh, e in all EU official languages, basically meaning that it can reach all uh, EU citizens. And now the objective is to educate 1% of European citizens in the basics of, of, of AI. And now just to put this into perspective, 1% it's 4.5, 5 million people. So you are on a good path, of course, but, but, but there is a lot to be done still. Um, Professor Ross, how do you want to reach that objective, and, and what are you doing to to actually achieve this this new goal? Yeah, that that's it. that is a super important question, and and so far we've talked about the the actual course and and how we built that together, uh, but I think one of the most important uh, success factors, uh, like obviously the, the the thing you're trying to promote has to be good. The, the content has to be good quality. You have to put a lot of energy into that. But then if you just put it online, I, I, sort of what I'd really like to say is that putting stuff online is not enough. You, you know, it's, it's only going to reach the people who are you, the usual suspects on um, online education and, and sort of on that on that sort of forward side of the digital gap digital skills gap and we really wanted to focus on the on the part of the population that are not uh, usually learning online their 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 um uh, their digital skills are not uh, at that level where we'd like them to be and for that we really spend a lot of effort in trying to come up with a a, a concept uh for the to, to create a movement um and there our collaboration between the university between the company, uh, between the government, uh, NGOs, different organizations, partnerships, uh, and now with the uh, with the commission, digital uh, and DG Connect, uh, and our country partners, we can really create that movement, and it's a really really um, important part uh, of trying to reach out to people. Um, and it, you know, it's there's very very many different. Uh, uh, parts of that, like stakeholders, uh, influencers, uh, spokespeople, uh, uh, partnerships, and and so on. So really, you know, you, you can't do that alone. You can't just put stuff online, and you know, no matter how much you spend money on, you know, Facebook advertisement, you will only reach the people that are already inside that bubble. And uh, so we've uh, chosen a different path. And so I will turn now to Vila. What does that mean? Concretely, how are you creating this movement? Are you looking for local partners? Do you have already partners in in other countries? What is the approach that that you are taking? Yep, uh, definitely. So as you said, like we are looking for for local partners in um, in uh, in each and every country. Um, we believe that the local partners, like, are the ones that can really reach out to uh, to the 
people that are aren't the usual suspects, as uh, as Professor Ru said. Uh, so really to reach out to 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 the vast amount of of people and to the masses and and get just the normal normal persons and normal like uh, persons to to uh, to join the course as well. And uh, and there's a, like uh, from the local partners, there's a different walls basically. It's always to kind of like a depending on on the country. Um, usually, um, some part of government is uh, is uh, is together uh, or like one of the partners. Basically, just like uh, depending on how active the governmental institution wants to be, like uh, really active or just like uh, supporting the cause. There's uh, usually there's always a university that helps the day to day of the course. Uh, also NGOs, um, companies, um, everybody kind of like with the motivation to really educate a vast amount of people. Like that's the that's the partner that we always look for with motivation to to really make the outreach and uh, and kind of like get the course to the hands of everybody. Um, if I may jump Anika, in. Yes. Uh, sorry, there is uh, there is some questions uh, about the languages. Uh, for example, is it already translated into Czech? Uh, just as an example, and I think there are volunteers here to join in and spread the word. Uh, we have uh, Slovenia. I think interpreted as a volunteering uh, <laughs> post uh, to uh, get involved in this movement of the AI elements, but maybe you could take that AI questions and maybe address the who, how you who you contact to get in, in involved. Yeah, yeah, if I may, um, um, sure. the translations are done by the European Commission, uh, so the DG for translation and with collaboration with DG Connect and thank you for like their help on the whole thing. Uh, the Finnish government is funding uh, the project at the moment for like making the technical uh, localizations for each and each, each and every EU language. So, un uh, so fortunately, different uh, language versions during uh, this year. And, uh, and, and we definitely need partners, we need help. So, so if you could, for example, share my um, contact details. Uh, I would like uh, be really happy if uh, if if our partner in this call basically feels that uh, that they could be in in help in this, and uh, they could contact, for example, me as a as a as a contact point, and then I could like uh, move that uh, forward. Thank you, really. Question yeah. from the chat. If I just uh, may Thanks, break. Anika, yes. They wanted to someone wants to know how you follow the graduates and if uh, you know if the course has helped uh, people finding jobs uh, and if there are any impressions on the employer side of the use of, of the course. Maybe Professor Ross, if you want to reply on that or. Yeah, so the question was whether we follow up on the on the graduates. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we do the, some of that. We haven't completed yet. We're in the process of of, of designing a, a, a like a real um, study uh, on how uh, this changes people's uh, behaviors or, or, or thinking uh, from a kind of an impact study point of view. Uh, we have some preliminary results uh, on our other, like including this course and other on online courses that we've offered for for a while, uh, which seem to support uh, the hypothesis that it improves people's employability, uh, which obviously is, is a great uh, great thing. Uh, but uh, but for this course, it's really, as I said, it's not primarily meant for um, for for like in sort of skills that improve your employability, but more like changing people's thinking. And that sort of measuring that is a is is not as as straightforward as just asking whether people are are at work. So, so we're still still kind of, um, we, of course, we have anecdotes uh, and sort of stories from people who have um, taken maybe different turns in their career path, but uh, but no no like uh, not a kind of a valid uh, scientific uh, study on this yet. Yeah, but it will be very interesting to complete one. Thank you, Professor Ross. Maybe uh, let's conclude because we we will now we are already running out of time. But I think this is super interesting. But but. Uh, we did not uh, yet link the course with the current situation in Europe. And I would be interested in hearing your views of how 
this course could eventually help European society to better cope with the impact of the of the current restrictions and, and border recovery. Do you see a path? Do you see a connection? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I do like this question, and I sort of it, it's not as if um, uh, I, I kind of I, I, I a little bit um, dislike the idea that so, some AI researchers. Uh, suggest that AI can somehow solve the crisis. It, it, AI can't solve this crisis. We need sort of other fields. Um, AI can support, but what we really need is just like plain statistical, epidemiologic, and economic modeling, um, and all kinds of efforts in awareness building. So, but how this course and how AI can, in a way, be relevant is just uh, um, improving people's um, uh, media literacy and, and numer like uh, number literacy so that they would be able to consume and understand statistical data. And that is a part of the course where we do explain to people how, um, how numbers can be used in, in a systematic fashion to, for instance, analyze statistical data. Um, uh, which is like it is relevant for AI, but it is relevant from this point of view to people's people's lives uh, also in, in a sort of more sort of holistic manner. And that in that way, I do think that the course sort of enables people to uh, to understand better how how to how to sort of um, consume information that they are offered about even about the uh, COVID situation all the time. Okay, thank you very much. But I still, uh, do you still think that uh, even though AI, as you said, cannot solve the whole the whole issue, mm -hmm. um, do you do you believe that that the, the applications and the experts who are now working on the of the applications can speed up maybe the 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 search for the vaccine, or can help to better trace yes, of course. the the spread of the virus? Yes, in in some some ways, yes. Uh, I think the they are kind of um they are the uh, some some of the cutting edge uh techniques for new vaccine development some of the sort of contact tracing or or mobility studying uh, studies use some ai but they're by and large they're they're mostly statistics they're mostly data i maybe rather like to say data science has a big big role in this rather than ai ai gives you a little bit um to self-sufficient uh, image of, of just entering data in a computer and then the computer spitting out uh, the long sought answer. It's not like that. It has to be scientists uh, who are into the into the into the problem, into medical studies, into into virological studies, in developing uh, vaccines and so on. So we need the experts. It's not like AI is going to replace anybody, but people get just new and improved tools. And in that way, yes, that's that's that is also true. But of course, the course doesn't go as far as that. You know, you don't become uh, that proficient in AI so that you'd be able to develop those cutting edge technologies yet. I think it's a great phrase saying AI will not replace anybody, but it will provide the, the good and right tools yeah. for us yeah. to 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 recover that. I mean, last very quick question to Vile because I saw also on your on the website of the Elements of AI that. There was part one, and we are talking about part one, but there is also some part two, building AI coming early 2020. So is this the, the next step? Is this the plan that, uh, that you foresee for this year? That is, that is the next step, like, uh, like to get more hands-on hands -on with, uh, with AI. So, so, so uh, the plan is that you can take the uh, next course, the building AI course, in, in, uh, in three different levels. Uh, the first level being uh, kind of the same level as, uh, as elements of AI, so basically just continuing from that. Uh, that you know don't need any like uh, skills, like a programming skills or anything like that. You can just like learn more and uh, learn new things about like more applied AI. The second tier being that uh, you get to read and edit uh, code. Um, and kind of like learn that, and the third level uh, being that you start from uh, from uh, from scratch, basically just to code your own AI within the course, or like a parts of AI. I, I think they knows even more about uh, kind of the uh, details on it, but uh, but hopefully we can like uh, introduce it uh, on some other webinar or some other meeting later when we have it more ready. 
Definitely, definitely. Thank you both. Anika, do we have any last question from the chat before we, we say goodbye? No, uh, nothing there. No, yeah, everyone's right. very happy and uh, found the uh, presentation and or the interview very interesting and the project very interesting. Excellent. Thank you. So, so yeah, if just, I may, I will just yes. uh, I'm sorry, just re reiterate that we really need everybody's help and we're really looking for partners, as many partners as we can, in every single country in in different roles and different ways because you know we can't do it alone. We just can't do stuff online. We really need uh, you know legs on the ground and uh, grassroots, uh, so people who have contacts in, in your local regions. And thank you very much, Professor Ross. And I think I saw, saw in the chat um, an email to, to Ville, so, uh, so anyone interested to becoming a partner for this Elements of AI course is, of course, very welcome to send this email in. And just a reminder or to repeat, the, the translations are already done, so the content is there. And uh, and so the the uh, the only last step is to form the partnership and, and, and work together, which which is what we all are doing here. So, Bile and Professor Ross, thank you very very much for your time for taking um, uh, part in our in our webinar, and I, I hope this was also useful for you as it was very much useful for us and for the community. Um, and thank you and take care. Uh, I, I understand that we are 10 minutes behind the, the time or, or over the time, so, I, so I'm i sorry for that, but I think the, the webinar was, was indeed very interesting. And um, thank you for all participating. I want to share one last thing before we go, which is um, a Mentimeter poll, and I'm, I'm just sharing the link in the chat now, and I'm also sharing my screen so that you can see it. And we would like to ask you to suggest um, topics for the future webinars that we have, because we believe that this uh, concept, this uh, this platform is is a good uh, good way to go and good way to continue. So if you go to menti.com and you use the code 360597, or if you just uh, click on the link that I just posted in the chat, you will be able to to express your opinion, your views, your ideas on on what topics should we. We should uh, touch upon next time. Just a reminder: the first webinar we spoke about education, skills in education. In the, the the other webinar, the second we spoke about companies and SMEs and employees. And today, it was about uh, advanced digital skills and digital experts. So please let us know. Please stay in touch. And uh, thank you once more for participating. Thanks to all the speakers. And we will find the updated list of of good uh, practices and good initiatives online as well as the presentations from today's webinar. Thank you very much and, uh, and see you hopefully in two or three weeks uh, at our next webinar. And Jakub, maybe mention that the Mentimeter will stay open for exactly. a, a while. So uh... yeah. We will keep the Mentimeter open at least, uh, at least until the beginning of next week. So you can also come back to it and you can submit multiple multiple words, multiple um, topics, and uh, then we will have a look at it. And, and of course, we will, we will take your recommendations or your, your views um, on board and propose the topics of the next webinars. So thank you very much. Annika, I think there is no more question right uh, in the no, chat. Thanks for everyone participating. Thanks. And thanks to Annika also for keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, and I see that already there are, uh, there are suggestions coming through that, uh, through Mentimeter, which is very good. So thank you. Take care. And once more, thanks very much to all the speakers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.